two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. And I'm here with the new neighbor. And uh, her name is Julie. She's from uh, Canada, eh? Julie, you there? I am. I am in Canada. You know, somebody told me a story of how they came up with that A thing, and it's because of the way it's spelt and how they got Canada got its name. Do you ever hear that? I don't know. I think that's an urban legend. It is. C A uh, N A D A. That's how they got it. But you Canadians are crazy. I, I got a martial arts background. We used to go up to Duluth to tournaments, and the Canadians would come down, and you guys are nuts. <laughs> in a good way. I was going to say, yeah. I, I think we have a reputation of being the nicest people on the planet. That's, that's the reputation that I'm trying to promote. Well, I don't know. Minnesota nice. We got it here. You're, yeah, you guys are nice. You can be nice. Too. Well, we're basically Canada. Yeah. In fact, we should make out a little agreement. If Trump goes all wacko, we're going to take it. We're going to cut it down into Minnesota so we can be Canadians. And... <laughs> That's a smart thing. Just like shift that border a little bit. Yeah, yeah we just pull it down. It's just a line. You just got to redraw it. No big deal. Yeah. Got to erase no it. Deal. I've seen it on maps. Anyways, let's get down to you, Julie. Are you yes. married? You got kids? What's your story? I am not married, and I do not have kids. Up there. Because it's too cold to procreate up there. No, oh. I, plenty of other people have done it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So where where specifically do you live? I am in Toronto. I am in the beautiful city of Toronto, and we are in summer right now, so it's uh, mid-August, so it is absolutely fantastic. You can be outside during certain months of the year, and mm -hmm. then certain months you definitely want to be inside and hibernating. But... And Toronto is, geographic, for us, geographically challenged folks. Is that above the Great Lakes? It, we, are, we, were, we are right on Lake Ontario. Got it. Beautiful Lake Ontario, yeah. Now I got a picture. You're up there. Kind of like Minnesota's kind of pointing at you. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what kind of work do you do? I read a little, I think I saw your blog, uh, Corporate Yogi. Yes. Is that it? Yep. Okay. So is that like, is that like a yoga type yogi? Yeah, well, I actually am um, trained and uh, have taught yoga for years. Uh, the what I really do, uh, my sort of sweet spot is combining the yoga and the corporate. So that's where the corporate yogi came from. But it's it's uh, working with entrepreneurs and helping them with their business, but also in bringing that spiritual and grounded sense to it. So I really like to focus on teaching entrepreneurs to focus on personal growth, because when you focus on personal growth, that's what allows your business to grow. Because quite often as entrepreneurs, we think it's just about working really hard. And if you just do a lot of work, then you'll be successful. Mm -hmm. But really what I ask them to do is to follow the fear and to really get in touch with what is it that you're being called forth to do with your business? What is that higher purpose and that big why that you're plugged into and trying to focus on? Because when you follow that, that's when you know your business is going to be successful. So do the stuff that you are afraid of. And so I guide people along that path of focusing on both the business benefits and making sure you're profitable, but also focusing on that personal development aspect as well. Got it. It's kind of like face your fear and do it anyways kind of thing. Beautiful. Yeah, the Susan Jeffers book. One of so, my favorite books, actually. Yeah, it Beautiful. may not be, a, it, it may not have nothing to be afraid of. It may be just direction that's like repelling you from something that's bad. You go the other direction and make it work, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Is but it, so often, you, you know, we're, we're trained you, to see fear as like a red light, that fear means stop, don't do that. Do you, do you suggest that they break through the fear kind of thing? Or is it kind of kung fu, like go around it? No, you can never go around it. You can never avoid it. You have to like face it head on and do what it is that you're scared of. Oh, face the demons. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they're only the thing is, it's only scary until you've done it and you've taken that first step, right? And then once you're in it, you're like, oh, this wasn't so bad. Like you know? riding a bike. At first, yeah. it's like, oh my God, I'm going to fall down. And then I get it. Cool. Yeah. And the actual process of facing your fears is like building a muscle. Right. If you have something you're scared of and then you lean in and do it and you're like, oh, you blueprinted yourself to be able to do that again because you did it once. And you're like, that wasn't so bad, actually. And some really cool stuff happened as a result. So then you can go and do it again and do it again and do it again. And then I think that also affects us globally. Uh, like, uh, say you've got a fear that's in your business career life. It might affect your relationships and your health and your spirituality and your financial situation. It'll sort of harmonize with all those other elements if you can break through that one thing that you've got. Like Absolutely. The That's a wheel. really well said. So whatever we face in our personal lives will help us in our professional life and vice versa. Yeah. Cool, yo. So I, I saw on your um, website 
I think, a retreat. Do you do a retreat? Mm, yeah. So I have a, a really cool, unique retreat coming up in November, and it's called the Retreat Leader Summit. So this is specifically a retreat for retreat leaders. So I'm going to take a bunch of people away who are either new at running retreats or kind of thinking about running them in the future. And we're going to do a sort of an immersive uh, style of retreat to not only teach them, but give them the chance to dip a toe into actually facilitating a group and step into that leadership role. That is very cool. I would like to talk to you further on that because I'm in the process of working out a program with the retreat venue uh, we're building in Costa Rica. So it'd be really oh. cool to be able to do what you're talking about to show these people how to do retreats because that would then build the, re -re the repeat business for the retreats. Retreat, repeat. I love it. Well, that's my favorite kind of business, repeat business, right? Yeah. It's like uh, really building that relationship with someone. And, and it's interesting now that I've done, this is the first style of retreat leader retreat I've done. Um, but I was thinking the other day that this is kind of an interesting opportunity. It's a win-win for everyone, right? Because then the retreat center gets to be featured and has a bunch of you know, new business as a result of these retreat leaders right. visiting it. Um, but then they can also host these in off peak times and the retreat leaders get to see like really deep dive and be immersive into what it's like to be, a, you know, on retreat and, and see what that feels like. Cause a lot of people I see who want to run a retreat have never actually been on a retreat. Mm -hmm. And so I always say that's one of the first, you know, really important things you need to do is to actually experience what it feels like as a participant so that you can really blueprint and know what it's going to be like for you to create that experience. Yeah, I was um, looking at starting a business. I was looking at before I got married, I was going to retire in Bali and get yoga uh, retreat coordinators to come to Bali to do the retreats. And uh, the reason I was doing it is because I see a lot of people that want to do a retreat because I think it'd be fun and they know how to teach yoga, but they don't understand all the other elements and how difficult it might be to get 20 people to go and they get 18, then they have to cancel. Yeah. So I was looking to create a, a more of a, on a marketing element of it. But you're kind of looking at like the fear part of it. They might go, I don't know if I can do this. And if they think that, they manifest that and then it ends up failing. Or they, they like I use the analogy of a combination lock often. If you know the combination, it's easy. If you don't, <laughs> it ain't going to work. So you can that, yeah. share with people. You'll be able to t tell them like um, well, make sure that you contact your people to make sure they have a passport. Something as simple as that that your average person might forget. Absolutely. Cool. I love this, Brad. I feel like we're uh, we're very in aligned in what we're trying to do. So where this whole concept of the retreat leader retreat came from is I have an online program that actually does just that. It teaches people everything they need to know about running a retreat. So it's uh, Retreat You, Retreat You for University. And so I have seven modules and it teaches people everything from the, the visioneering, the validating, how to guarantee demand for your retreat, uh, the creating, the marketing and the selling. And so there's also the leadership component, like what's your mindset? What is it going to take for you to step into this leadership role? But then there's a lot of those, yeah, good old fashioned, simple things like make sure that you have, you know, how to do the contract and how to put the money down and how to price it and how to collect money from people, not just, oh, yeah, verbal, I'm going to come. Like you have to get money to change hands right. and a form signed so that you get, you know, people confirmed. So all those simple things, just because I have a business background, um, I was able to kind of curate that into easy little bite-sized learnable chunks for people. Well, that's really cool. Cause, so after this is done, if you want to hang on, I'd like to talk further about some stuff and because sure. there, there are some uh, collaborative things that uh, we, I can elaborate more on this Costa Rican event center. Oops. Very cool. So um, I don't like to do these too long because people, have, you know, we have this common thing of time and there's 24 hours in a day for everybody and people have their things they got to do. So I try and keep these initial interviews kind of short so we don't, uh, if they get to know who you are, they know how to get a hold of you. So if you could share with us how to get a hold of you, what's your website, your retreats, website and all that. And then I'll also put those links in the YouTube channel and things too. Okay, that's amazing. So if somebody wants to check out uh, more information about retreats, they can head to retreatu.co, so R-E-T-R-E-A-T-U dot C-O, and then forward slash retreats. You can see all the details about our Retreat Leader Summit coming up in November. Um, there's also an opportunity to do a free uh, retreat leader training course on that website as well. And then for anybody who's not a retreat junkie, who is just kind of curious about starting up a business, they can check out my podcast. It's called Conscious Business with the Corporate Yogi. So you can find that 
um, on, in the iTunes, or you can find that on my website, thecorporateyogi.com. Very so cool. Good, yeah, good tips and tricks for people starting out a business, some practical stuff, some mindset stuff. But really, you know, please focus on that personal growth aspect and really expect that to be part of your journey because that's really what it's all about. Well, I'm going to sign this one off, but I'd like to do another one uh, sometime, maybe focused on something specific like yoga retreats versus the university versus uh, the, the retreat training or whatever. And we could target some niches of certain things. On the, yeah, the maybe future. we could do like a real time, like actual teaching people the steps of, of building their own yeah, retreat. I would love to do that yeah, because uh, yeah. we are kind of in the same realm. I'm, uh, we're, we're starting at literally ground level with dirt and building from oh. there. So it's we got a clean slate to work with. Well, thank you. Thank you for this. Anyways, to, to I appreciate you. you taking the time. I'm going to sign this one off. So peace, love, and happiness. Thank you, Julie. If you want to stick on, we'll uh, have another chat. Other than that, I'm going to put this one in the can, as they say, and beam it up to the universe for people to find. <laughs> okay. Okay. Peace. Thank you. Bye.